The Mario Kart 8 soundtrack is well known for being fantastic, but how often do you take the time to actually listen to the music that is being played as you play? Join me in this series as we look at the dynamic music found in Mario Kart 8. I am the rambling man, I ramble on about things that I love. If you enjoy this video, a like would really go a long way, and please do subscribe to the channel, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Right, let's get to it. Mario Kart games always have extremely well-crafted soundtracks, and due to the nature of the games having maps from all over the Mario and Nintendo universes, there is a huge variety of different musical styles and genres in each game. Each game houses music that perfectly complements the feeling of the racetrack that it is played over. Mario Kart 8 takes this to a new level of craftsmanship as it houses dynamic musical tracks that change with the flow of the race. Music that is affected by gameplay in any way is called dynamic music as it has the ability to adapt to fit what is happening on screen. This gives the player a sense of feedback as they are playing, giving the game sonic cohesion, making it more immersive. In this series, we're going to be looking at all the different dynamic music in the game, and to kick off, let's look at a few things that dynamically change the music across the whole game, no matter what racetrack you are playing on. Lightning is an item that you can pick up from an item box. This is a track-wide nuke that targets everyone apart from the user and zaps them with a bolt of electricity. This instantly makes them slightly spin out, lose their items, but most importantly, it shrinks them down to a smaller size. When they are smaller, they are much slower and are also prone to being run over, becoming squished, which will slow them down even more. It's an iconic item of the Mario Kart franchise and it's a great recovery tool for anyone who is towards the back of the race. The thing that gives this item even more of a presence in the game is how it affects the music. After being shocked, whatever music is being played will suddenly change. The music becomes distorted and warped with this large vibrato being applied to it. This makes the player feel small and disorientated, as if the whole game has been affected by the lightning bolt. You, as a player, feel more connected with the game, and you feel even more frustrated as your character and the music wobbles down the track. Once you pop back to your original size, the music returns to normal, and you get back into the race. The ever iconic Power Star from the Mario games is a mainstay in the Mario Kart franchise. Making the user invincible and giving them a big speed boost, this is one of the most powerful items in the game. As soon as the player uses this, the music cuts out instantly to make room for the classic Power Star theme to play. <laughs> This theme empowers the player with its jumping bassline driving underneath the staccato chords as they are given the short-term ability to play as recklessly as they want, taking out other players and driving off-road with no issues. The music also serves as a timer for the player. The power-up lasts for around seven seconds, going through two and a half loops of the song, five bars in total. This is a great device that informs the player as to when the power-up will end, helping them to put themselves into the right position for when the power-up subsides. It is a great item that's made even better by its musical implementation. We're going to move away from the items now and focus in on our little friend, Lakitu. Lakitu is the referee of the Mario Kart games. He sits in his clouds, starting the race off, waving the flag at the finish line, and also helping racers get back into the race if they've fallen off the track. What would we do without him? Each of these actions have a little sound effect that's associated with them, but it's what happens when you head into the final lap that is the most interesting and dynamic.
As soon as you start the third lap, the music that has already been playing cuts out for this. This signifies that you're on the last lap. The rising chords increase the tension and the excitement for the player. After this jingle is over, we head back into the music. However, this time, it's a bit different. It starts from the very beginning, and it's been sped up. It's now at 1.25 times the speed. The music is now faster and more frantic, reflecting the feeling of the racers as they race through the final lap. By now, you've had two laps to get accustomed to the music that is played. And now the change just feels impactful. This is such a simple yet effective musical idea. And every time I go into the last lap of a race, I can feel the music change and shift the tension up a notch. It's even better when you're playing in split screen with your friend and you're not in first and you suddenly hear that jingle, you hear the music start to speed up and you know that your pal's on their last lap and it gives you that urge just to really go for that last lap and it's brilliant. Now, this is a feature that I genuinely didn't know was in the game until about a week ago, and it's called Front Running. In Mario Kart 8, there is a variation of every single piece of music called a Front Running Variation. This variation is played, well, whenever the player is in first place. This is super simple, it usually only adds a faster drum track to the music, but I think it's a really nice touch and it reflects the player's achievement in the soundtrack. It also adds a little bit of tension to the arrangement as the player fights to keep first place. I mean, the fact that I didn't know this was in the game um, just says that maybe I'm not paying attention, but um, yeah, it's just a nice little touch that I found as I was researching for this video. When you finish a race in Mario Kart 8, the music that plays is actually based on where you came in the race. For example, if you come in first, you'll hear this. If you come between second place and sixth place, you'll hear this. And if you come seventh or lower, you'll hear this. After these little jingles, you get the results screen and the music that's played over these results is actually also dependent on your ranking. You have the more upbeat and funky track that plays if you come between first and sixth place using a staccato piano and synths to celebrate your performance. Then the more mellow music that plays when you come seventh or lower, using a strummed guitar, synths and softer piano tunes to reflect how you might not have done as well as you hoped. And it's things like this, the little details that I love and I think really enrich the whole experience of playing this game. There is a musical track that reflects each situation that you find yourself in. I think it's brilliant. Now we're going to be moving on to the tracks. I'm going to be going cup by cup, picking out the tracks that have adaptive music in it. This means that I won't actually be looking at the majority of the tracks in this game. I think that every single racetrack has brilliant musical backing, but this video series is solely focused on the dynamic and adaptive music of this game. So let's start with the Mushroom Cup. 
There is actually only one track in this cup that incorporates dynamic music into its theme, and that is Water Park. This map takes place in a theme park with the track going along one of the rides, the Sub Coaster. In this track, you drive past various different attractions, all full of people enjoying themselves and having a great time. And the music does a brilliant job of reflecting this. The bass lays down an upbeat Latin rhythm with an energetic piano section accompanied by a lively brass section. Steel drums are also used to give it a slightly tropical and sunny feeling. Now, being a water park, there are large sections that are under water and this is where our first use of geographically dynamic music is used. As soon as your cart enters the water, you hear the main music muffle, the brass and piano cut out completely. Instead, you hear a flute take over the tune. It's much softer and brighter. It is then passed over to this synth. The drums have toned down, still there, but much lighter. This whole shift in the music takes away a lot of the weight of the arrangement. It feels much more floaty. The tone of the music itself shifts as soon as the atmosphere around your cart changes. Now, let's watch a lap and see how the dynamic music works in real time. I think the music in this track just does a fantastic job of reflecting the various different places that you are. There's only two variations in the theme, but both variation is just so distinct and so reflective of the atmosphere that it is incorporated into. So let's move on to the next one. Next up is the Flower Cup. And again, there is only one track in this cup that actually has dynamic music in it, and that is Shy Guy Falls. Now, if I'm gonna be honest with you, there's not actually that much that happens in this track, but it still counts, and it's also pretty cute. This track has you driving around a cliffside, using the anti-gravity feature of the game to drive up and down the waterfalls is, is pretty cool. And as you race up and down the cliff itself, you can see Shy Guys working really hard all around, lifting things up and down the cliff, and then towards the end of the track, you can see them mining. Now, the music has a slightly country blues vibe to it, and is actually in the Mixolydian mode, which is often used in blues and rock. But the variation in the music actually comes from the Shy Guys themselves. <laughs> Now here is a quote from the actual composer of this music uh, talking about it. We wanted to give this track the same sense of excitement you get from accelerating rapidly down a steep slope. We thought the Shy Guys moving in time to the music were really cute, so we added their voices for fun, singing in time to the track. Now I think that singing is a bit of a stretch, but to be fair to them, they are in time with the music. Now this is actually the only variation in the track, but I do think it has a bit of charm to it. Something that is actually really cool is that when you hit the final lap and the music speeds up, these two guys also speed up their little seesawing so that they keep in time with the music. And I think that's a nice attention to detail. Next off, we're looking at the Star Cup and diving into Dolphin Shoals.
This is a beautiful and sunny map with a lot of variation in its landscape and it has music that really reflects this. The music starts off with some percussion that then leads into an arrangement consisting of a driving bass line that helps push the music along, a nylon stringed guitar, a drum kit playing samba rhythms and a melody played on a synthesizer. This sets a great tone that perfectly fits driving through these shoals with the dolphins swimming alongside you. Now, in the middle of the lap, there is a section where you descend into the depths of a cave. And as you do, there is a change in the musical arrangement. You hear the synth become slightly distorted and sound more distant. An arpeggio is placed at the back of the arrangement. It, it's slightly creepy and mysterious, which really fits the underwater cavern aesthetic. This new arrangement pulls our focus away from the pre-established music. We have been lifted up and lifted away from what was playing earlier, which beautifully reflects this section's gimmick of using the currents from the pipes to shoot you off the ground and float to the end of the cavern. And now we come to the most famous part of this track. As soon as you break out of the water, you are greeted with that alto sax solo, with a new added string section to accompany it. The sax blares out an energetic and punchy variation of the main theme as you drift around the loop, coming back to where you started. As soon as you start a new lap, the Lakitu jingle obscures the alto sax as it drops out, leaving you with the original arrangement. As shown in the first video in this series, for lap 3, the music is always faster. The other tracks in the game simply speed up the original recording for the final lap, whereas in Dolphin Shoals, there is a slightly different approach. It has a new arrangement. The final lap gets kicked off with some more intense percussion and whistles moving into the music, this time with a more intense drum kit and the sax solo with the strings over the top. Another thing to note is that the underwater cave section of this lap doesn't have its own arrangement, the music doesn't change for it, shattering this creepy atmosphere as you barrel through the cavern with no care anymore for what's around you. With this final arrangement, the saxophone is unleashed and just goes to town with phenomenal chromatic licks crashing down as you drift around the loop and glide your way to the finish line. The progression of the music in this track is so beautifully paced. Laps one and two start off with a samba feel to them, calm, but still with a purpose. The music then gets derailed, untethered to its pre-established form as you enter the cavern. The upbeat drive transforms into an uncertain tension. Then, as you come into the last turn, the saxophone dispels all of that tension and brings you back with an even more intense drive to the music, only for you to return to where you started for the next lap. And then, as you come into the last lap, the arrangement just holds nothing back as you race through the shoal with the saxophone blasting in your ears the entire way. It, it is a phenomenal piece of music, but it is elevated to even more heights by its dynamic engagement with the gameplay itself. Now, with all that in mind, let's have a look at a lap to see how the music shifts as you drive through it.
Electroderm is a pretty cool track. It has music that is quite unusual for the Mario Kart series, using dance music. It has a funky electronic beat with heavy drums, a crunchy bass and synthesizers. It really fits the dance floor aesthetic of this racetrack. Now the really cool thing about this map is that it has different sections that each add a different layer to the music itself. So the music is actually constantly changing as you drive. As you enter this first anti-gravity section, an arpeggiator starts to play. And the speed of this arpeggiator is actually linked to the speed that your cart is going. It's really cool. It starts on a C, which is actually the key that the music is in for the first two laps. Then it will jump up to an F if you're going fast enough, and then up to a G, which is the fifth if you're going even faster. And then if you manage to get a turbo, or hit the spin boost pillar or someone else's cart, and you get a big boost in speed, then it will jump up to a C, which is an octave above where you started. <laughs> What's really cool about this is that the pitch itself is determined on how you're doing. So if you hit a banana or you get hit by a green gel or something, then the pitch changes. Or if you get a boost, the pitch changes. It's an extremely dynamic piece of music that will be different every single time you play it. And I think that just adds a lot of spice to this particular section, which is really cool. Then you get to the section where you have to choose the pink or the green path, which doesn't really make much of a difference for now, but in a little bit, you'll see that it actually does make a little bit of a difference. And then when we get to this section, you can hear a phaser filter is put onto the music, giving it a sort of retro feel. Now we get to the steps, and this is where the decision of pink or green actually does make a difference to the music, because the steps have a different audio cue depending on which route you take. As you drop down each step, a musical sting is played, a chord going up a semitone for each step you land on, starting on an A and moving up to a D flat. If you take the green route, the chord is played on an electric guitar, and as you land on that last step, you hear a Hey! Take the pink route, and the chords will play an orchestral hit, and you'll hear a Oh! As you land on the last step. This just adds a bit of personality and flavor to each route, and it means that each time you drive through the lap, the music is going to be slightly different, which just makes it more dynamic and immersive and just a little bit cooler. So we love this. This is very nice. As you jump off the glide panel and you fly down from the steps, you can see a big group of Koopa Troopers and Shy Guys having a boogie on the dance floor, having a bit of a clap and a bit of a cheer. And what's really nice is that these claps and cheers are in the musical arrangement in time with the music itself. So it just feels like there's a big group of people having a blast, cheering you on, and you feel that encouragement. What's also cool is that as you drive away from them, they slowly die down and disappear because it's... That's how sound works. And the further away you are from something, the less you can hear it. Now in this track, as the speed increases for the last lap, it actually also goes up one whole semitone. And so this means that when you come to the arpeggiator section, it now starts on a C flat and all of its musical jumps are adjusted accordingly. However, the musical stings on the steps actually don't change as they end on a C flat. So this means that in the final lap, you'll land on the last step, which is now actually the tonic of the music that's being played. Now, I think that Electrodome is actually the map with the most musical variation in the whole game. You've got the bass musical track, you've got the arpeggiator that comes in, you've got the bass track with that filter, the phaser on it, you've got the orchestral hits, you've got the Shy Guys and Koopa Troopers clapping along, and then also you've got the front running track. Then you've also got all of that, but upper semitone for the last track. It just means that when you're driving through this dance floor, this club, you feel the changes and the shifts in the different locations. I just think it's great. It's a, it's a brilliant track.
Mount Wario takes place on a mountain, being a race from the top to the bottom of the ski slope. It's a fantastic idea for a racetrack, and by nature of it being a race from A to B, instead of traditional laps, there are four different sections of this map, all taking place in various stages down the mountain. It's pretty cool. The track starts with you and all of your karting rivals jumping out of a plane, Mission Impossible style. Bye. Okay, bye bye! Oh no! Let's go! As you start the race, the music begins opening with a rising orchestral phrase that ends on a held C. This has been written to correspond with the player as they jump out of the plane and onto the mountain, so that the C will either be played whilst the player is in the air or as they land on the slope. It's a pretty epic way to start the track. The beauty of this track is that each section not only has a different musical arrangement, but it actually has different musical material. There is one motif that permeates the whole track, but the music around that motif really reflects the atmosphere of where the player is. At the beginning of the track, you are on top of the mountain, barreling down this open slope. You can see all around you, and the music reflects this. The solo violin is soaring above the brass band texture, unrestricted, free, and having a blast. Then, as you come into the second section, the cave area, you get a more moody brass band arrangement with harmonies that are much closer together. The violin is traded for an alto saxophone and electric guitar, a bit more moody and grungy. We can hear the motif here in this section, but this time it's more of a rhythmical drive in the brass section than actually a main tune. However, we then get to a call and response between this brass section and the guitar as their intersecting lines create polyrhythms, bringing a beautiful energetic energy to this arrangement. As we move through the dam, we jump into the forest area and the violin comes back in, but this time it's much more intense, swapping solos with the saxophone and the guitar as if they're fighting for the limelight. There is a real lack of the motif in this section of the music. It's now swapped out for straighter semi-quaver passages. And because of this change, there is a greater sense of speed and intensity to the music as the soloists barrel through these semi-quaver passages over the heavy drive of the brass and the drums, beautifully reflecting the player's cart, weaving through the trees and jumping off the fallen logs. And then we come to the final section. The true MVP of Mario Kart 8, our boy Lakitu. Let's give him a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Lakitu comes in and he breaks up the music as he signals the final lap jingle. This gives the music time to breathe before shifting up a gear. The guitar and the saxophone come back in with that motif. As we're out of the woods, we're back on track to finish the race. This arrangement is not as complex and messy. We are now hurtling down the ski slope. There aren't any obstacles in our way, just a straight shot to the finish line. As we come to the end of the slope, the claps of the crowds waiting for us slowly start to creep into the music, their cheers and whoops spurring us on to make it to the end. It truly is a beautifully crafted piece of music and a beautifully crafted map in general. Others have dissected it in even more detail than me, so please do go and look for that because it is a great piece of music to look at and you'll have a newfound appreciation for this track if you do. But I just wanted to throw my hat into the ring and talk about it because I love the music and I love the map and I love this track in general. And that is Mount Warrior a truly energetic piece of music that shifts with the map itself. It's a beautiful 
encapsulation of Mario Kart 8's design to music and map design, how they interconnect and they weave so well together to create a great experience for the player. This map is fantastical and somewhat magical as it takes place high up in the air as you drive over the clouds through an airship and then get blasted into a thunderstorm. The music that accompanies this adventure leans quite heavily into the feeling of fantasy film-esque music. It's optimistic and upbeat as you bounce across the clouds. It uses an orchestral arrangement, it feels grandiose, with the trumpet section taking over the main melody, driving us forwards into the clouds, the wind in our hair and the sun shining on our heads. Now, the dynamic music comes into play as we blast out of the cannon on the airship, getting shot up into the dark clouds above. As we land, there's thunder and lightning all around us as we are surrounded by the darkness. The fun and light orchestral arrangement fades beneath the clouds and in comes the melody on a crunchy overdrive guitar accompanied by another guitar chugging away on the chords with a punchy electronic drum beat supporting the arrangement. The sudden change in feeling and atmosphere is crazy. It's the same music, but it feels so different. The electronic arrangement has far less layers, having only three instruments opposed to the whole orchestra in the original arrangement. So even though it feels somewhat hollow, the effects on the guitar and the choice of sound widens its sound and the three instruments fill up the space in a completely different, more aggressive way. As you come to the edge of the storm cloud and fly down from the darkness, the sun starts to shine on you again, and you see the open sky around you, and in comes the warm orchestra, hugging you back into the warmth and fun happiness as you make your way to the finish line. A really, really simple change. There's only two different arrangements for two different sections on the lap. It's the same music, but nonetheless, it works wonders to build the atmosphere around you. Now, unfortunately, there are no more dynamic tracks in the Special Cup or in the Egg Cup. So we're gonna have to jump straight to the Crossing Cup and dive into everyone's favorite track of chaos and madness. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. Baby Park is a really dumb track. <laughs> it's just one loop, seven laps. One loop and it's just full of madness. Actually playing this with a bunch of friends with frantic items on, on 200cc is always just crazy and it's, it's a good laugh. And you know what, the music for this track encapsulates the whole feeling pretty well. Just like the track itself, it has a carnival-esque feeling to it with that walking bass going boom, 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 you know? And the music just seems to go around and around and around and around and around, just never ending. The dynamic aspect of this track is also pretty chaotic. Each lap has actually a slightly different version of the music. As soon as you start a new lap, the music shifts up a semitone and goes just a little bit faster. And there are seven laps. So by the last lap, the music has gone up by a fourth and is a lot faster. It sounds kind of like this. <laughs> Truly an iconic but stupid racetrack. Now, I wouldn't really class the Animal Crossing music as truly dynamic because the music doesn't change with the gameplay itself but as I'm here I might as well touch on it. This track has four different seasons spring, summer, fall and winter all of which change the atmosphere, the look and a little bit of the layout of the track itself. 
And when you play, one of these seasons will just be chosen at random, unless you know the secret mega hack. When you're on versus mode, when you pick the track, you can actually choose what season you want it to be by holding down the corresponding shoulder button. Whoa, pro gamer. What's lovely about this is that each season has a different musical arrangement to fit with the atmosphere of the track. Spring has a funky bass guitar line, melodic flute and trombone lines, and, and a phased electric guitar, creating a musical atmosphere that is bright and cheerful. Summer has an upright bass, a beautifully folky violin, piano and guitar with what sounds like a glockenspiel. It, it leans heavily into its folky swing. Fall feels warm and tired. A calming electric guitar line takes us for a lovely drive down the coast, the slumbering accordion and the use of bongos lulling us into a sense of comfort. Winter has freaking jingle bells, everybody. Father Christmas is here. <laughs> and that saxophone is so damn sexy and smooth. With the accordion adding a little bit of energy under those saxophone long sustained notes, it makes you feel like you want to curl up by a fire. It's so cozy. See, what's great is they all play the same music but just on different instruments and in a different arrangement. Uh, and it just really suits the atmosphere and the feeling of whatever season it is, which I think is just a lovely touch to that. It, it's sort of quasi dynamic music. And so I do think it deserves a bit of recognition in this series, but it's not true dynamic music, but uh, we'll give it a pass because it's pretty cool. Okay, so I just want to clarify something. This track is called Music Park. That's what, that's its name. However, being British, Nintendo obviously thought that we would have a really hard time understanding this whole idea of a musical park. And so in the British version of the game, this track is called Melody Motorway. Uh, like, what? This is the case for quite a few tracks, and I really don't know why they would give the tracks different names for different regions when, when they're both in the same language. I think that's just strange. But I will not be confined, Nintendo. I am my own man. I am the rambling man. I think Music Park is a better name, so that's what I'm going to call it. So I just wanted to let you know, because in this track, like in the intro cutscene, in the menu selection, you'll see the wrong name, and I didn't want people getting confused. Taking place in a magical musical park, this is not a motorway Nintendo. Motorways are for fast moving traffic, they're usually wide, they have separate carriageways for vehicles traveling in opposite direction, there's only one direction you can go in this, you're not having <laughs> Taking place in a magical musical park, this racetrack is actually made up of the musical instruments that's used in the music itself, which I think is a really nice touch. The musical track has an upbeat feel to it with this heavy bass and drums accenting the downbeats and then the offbeats being punctuated by the brass section. So you get the like bump bump ba 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 you know what I mean. That's that's the musical term ba ba. This really gives a clear and steady drive to the piece as a whole, which is also reflected in the movements of the various instruments that make up the racetrack. You can see the trumpets going in and out there, you've got the cymbal, and then obviously the musical notes jumping up and down. The main melody is either played on a synthesizer or an electric guitar, and unfortunately we actually don't have either of these instruments on the track, which I think is a real shame. Now for the dynamic aspect of the music. This comes with how the carts interact with the road itself. Look, as I said earlier, various parts of the road are made out of various instruments. There are three sections that stand out in particular, the first of which is a piano, then it's a xylophone, then it's a vibraphone. In these three sections, the road becomes the instrument itself, and as you drive along the keyboard, whichever instrument that the keyboard is made of will be inserted into the mix playing ascending and then descending chromatic scales. It sounds like this. Amen. 
which is really cool because it feels like as you're driving through, you're sort of playing the musical instruments and it's added to the texture, which is a really nice touch. Now, what is actually really fun is the fact that if you jump or, you know, hop on these, on the keyboard, on these instruments, it will sound like you're hitting the keys randomly, which I think is really cool. Unfortunately, the sound file is random. It's different every time you hop on it. They haven't actually assigned specific notes to the keys, which I think is a real shame. It would have been next level. It means we could get some Mario Kart 8 piano covers up in here. I really want to hear uh, Mario Kart 8's version of All Star by Smash Mouth. That would be fantastic. <laughs> This sort of goes without saying, but the drums that are sort of like jumping pads, when you hit them, they make a drum noise. That's, yay, we love that. That's good sound design. And then we come to the final section of the track. As soon as you enter this section, you can hear that for the last three notes of every second bar of the music, there is a clicking noise, kind of like um, drumsticks being knocked together. Not only is this a new texture to listen to, but it also is linked with the timing of those big musical notes so that you know when they're going to jump up and when they're going to land. And this is actually really helpful from a gameplay perspective because when they land, they cause the ground to bounce your cart up in the air. So if you know the timing of the music, you can perform an air trick and get a little speed boost every single time they jump up and down because you're timing it with the music, which is quite funky. Obviously, uh, in the final lap, when we get a speed change, everything we've talked about in this video sort of matches that new tempo. And actually, you can see that all the jumping notes and all the instruments in the background slightly speed up so that they match the music, which is, which is just nice. <laughs> I do think that the bouncing notes are really cute. <laughs> like, look at them. They're just having such a good time, just bouncing around, enjoying the music. They are musical notes, right? So they probably have a very limited understanding of reality. They're probably not that self-aware. They, they know that they're in a music park and they're not on a flipping motorway. But, you know, all they do is jump up and down and their existence is joy and I love it. Yeah, I love this map. It's just fun and musical, inherently musical. Um, and as I said earlier, you really feel like you're actually contributing to the music as you drive over the various instruments. It's funky and it really is just an encapsulation of the idea of dynamic music. And it's a fun idea to use instruments as the road and then implement those instruments in a way that is dependent on where you're driving. I just think that's a really great idea and they seem to have a lot of fun making this particular track. What an absolute classic track. I remember playing this on my DS back in the day and this remaster is just awesome. So this track takes place inside of a clock, hence the name. And the music does a wonderful job of reflecting this. It sounds very mechanical in nature with that, that jumping bass line and the syncopated chords played on the synth. And actually what is cool is that you can see the cogs in the background moving in time with the music, making it kind of seem that the clock itself is producing what we're listening to. The dynamic music here comes in as you drive past various sections of the track itself. For example, you have these swinging pendulums as you drive up to them. This ringing can be heard, a bell when you're near them, as if from a grandfather clock, which is really cool. I really like these watch faces. They have a really cool and funky ticking rhythm that comes into the arrangement when you drive around them. As you drive through the enclosed cog section, there is this heavy mechanical percussion backing that comes in at the very bottom of the arrangement. And then at the very end of the track, the finish line banner actually looks like an alarm clock and it's got bells and it starts ringing, which is really cool. 
What I like about all these different things is that as you drive through the track, the different sections of the clock will be added and then taken away to the musical arrangement as you drive past them, making it feel as though you are sort of on this tour of the inner workings of this mechanical wonder. However, there is one flaw that I have noticed as I've played and looked into this track. On the recorded file found on the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack, all of the different sound effects are wonderfully synced so that they are bang in time with the music as a whole. However, I have found that the sound files for the different sections are just not in time in the actual game. They're all slower than the music. Now, a negative Nancy might complain about this because it shatters the immersion that this is one large piece of machinery that is working together, ruining the rigid and mechanical feel of the piece. But I actually kind of like it. It gives this track a weird complexity to it as all of these different parts are sort of working as individual pieces and it all creates this cacophony of noise and a bit of chaos. But maybe that's just me being the optimist and trying to find good things in something that might not be programmed correctly. But hey, that's just me. But all in all, it's a really fun way of implementing the musical elements into the music whilst linking it to the theme of the track. Jumping out of TikTok clock, we're going to move through an interdimensional portal and pop out in a land of fantasy and wonder. Next up is Hyrule Circuit. <laughs> Okay, honestly, there's not too much to say here, um, but obviously the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack as a whole is just made that much better because it has the Legend of Zelda theme in it. And to be honest, this is an energetic and upbeat killer rendition of this very famous piece of music, and I love it. When it comes to the dynamic music though, there isn't actually that much going on. However, I would just like to briefly point out two things about the sound design that really play into the immersion of being in a Zelda game. So first of all, you have the coins which have been swapped out for rupees, which is very fitting. And when you collect them, it doesn't play the stock coin collection sound. They make a different sound that sounds more like you're picking up a rupee, which is a nice addition. And then secondly, the standard item roulette sound is replaced with a sped up version of the sound effect used in Zelda games when you open a chest, which is a really nice throwback to that. <laughs> Okay, so, there is only one bit of dynamic music in this track, and it's actually triggered by the gameplay. So, when you enter the castle, if you manage to hit all three of these boost pillars, which is actually <laughs> quite a lot harder than you might think, the Master Sword glows and starts floating, and all magical stuff, and then the Legend of Zelda puzzle solved sound effect is played, which sounds like this. This is one of the most iconic sounds in gaming, and I think it's a really lovely addition to the track. Flying out of Hyrule Castle and back into the Mario universe, we come to one of my favourite tracks in the whole game that contains what I think is actually the best and most underrated musical Easter egg in, like, the whole of Mario history ever. So, let's dive into Super Bell Subway. Now, honestly, this is an extremely optimistic rendition of a subway, or as I would call it, a tube station. Here we have a busy and lively subway full of cafes and markets, something that you would never find in Britain. <laughs> the music fits this, right? It's, it's really jolly and warm. You have this smooth bass line, these bright chords strummed on the acoustic guitar, a, a light but bouncy drum beat. And then we head to the instruments that head up the tunes. You've got this trombone, an accordion, a vibraphone, and a synth. Like, they feel really homely and fun. And as we drive through this lovely and welcoming market area, we see people dancing and cheering and having fun. And then we head towards the platform and 
off onto the train tracks and the mood changes drastically. The drum beat gets a lot more intense and the acoustic guitar is swapped for this electric flange guitar and the synth sharpens its tone sounding harsher as it plays more chromatic runs. However, the best addition to the music is the bass line, man. As we head underground, the bass guitar starts playing the World 1-2 theme from the OG Super Mario Bros. The underground theme. Probably one of the most famous pieces of video game music ever created and it's just slotted into the arrangement and I think it's fantastic. Like they even find space in the music to put in that, that really chaotic second phrase and it works extremely well. <laughs> Man, I love this addition, and, and I only really started to notice it once I stopped focusing on playing the game in this, in this map, and I started listening to the music more carefully. This new arrangement does a fantastic job of making you feel underground and sort of more on edge as you drive over the train tracks, dodging the trains in the dark, and then you realize the underground theme is playing, and you go, oh my goodness, that's such a big brain play, Nintendo. Well done, beautiful stuff. I just love this track. No one talks about it, but I love this track. It's so fun. And when you first hear that boom, 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 you're like, oh yeah. But yeah, that's, I just love it. It's great. Honestly, I want to play more F-Zero now. What a bonkers and insanely cool map. I think they decided to shoot up copious amounts of monster energy when they wrote this track, because I didn't know that Captain Falcon shredded on the guitar and the saxophone at the same time, damn. As you barrel down this awesome track, you're accompanied by an incredibly hype piece of music, pulling from heavy metal and, and rock. It's actually a remake of the Big Blue music from the F-Zero games. You have these punctuated chords chugging away on the synth, an insanely energetic and complex drum beat with amazing riffs and fills. And then you have the dueling main instruments, the electric guitar and the saxophone, like head up against each other, swapping and taking over the tune from each other with call and response sections, and then just whole solo sections to allow the musicians to just show off their insane techers. It just slaps so hard. As with Mount Wario, this is actually a straight A to B race, so there's no laps, but instead different sections. As soon as you hit that last lap, our boy Lakitu comes in, and this time he's forgoing the normal free lap jingle, and instead an F-Zero inspired wah is played. As you hear the iconic voice line from the original game, yeah, the final lap. That was such a bad impression. <laughs> it's actually pulled directly from F-Zero, which is awesome. The cool thing about the music in this track, and what makes it actually dynamic, is that that final section has its own music. We jump straight into the saxophone, just going buck wild, running up and down the scales like a madman before throwing it to the guitar. A final musical duel happens before the race ends, and this just builds and maintains energy and excitement for, for the last sprint to the finish line. It's so freaking good, man. This track is awesome. One final thing about this track. I didn't actually talk about the other F-Zero track, Mute City, because it didn't have any dynamic music in it, but this actually is the same for that track. Both F-Zero tracks actually have their own final result screen music, which is really lovely. And it's a remaster of the original ending theme found in the OG F-Zero on the SNES. Uh, which is just a lovely touch that, again, sets these tracks apart from the rest in the game. <laughs> 3DS Rainbow Road has a pretty neat bit of dynamic music in it. Throughout this track, the music is full of synthesizers playing the main tune and the bass line and all the counter melodies with a driving drum kit underneath it all, giving the music direction and a consistent drive as you power slide round various planets, moving through space with speed on the iconic Mario Rainbow Road. 
I love this track so much. But something really cool happens when you get to the moon. As you come off the Rainbow Road itself and fall down onto the moon's surface, a little bit slower than usual due to the lower pull of gravity, because you're in space, the bass line and driving drum kit comes out of the arrangement altogether, and you're just left with the higher synths. This gives the music a slight weightless feel to it, reflecting where you are on the course as you bounce around on the surface of the moon. Really cool stuff. And then as soon as you hit the rainbow road again, the music cuts out to start the last lap music. A simple but effective use of dynamic music to immerse the player into the world of the game. Next up is Yoshi's Island. Now it doesn't exactly have any dynamic music in it, but it does have different musical stings and tracks that give it more personality and make it stand out. For example, in Mario Kart 8, usually a track starts with this little fanfare. But in Yoshi's Island, you have this little cute drum roll instead. The musical sting that is played when you go over the finish line on the last lap and you finish the race is usually this. But in Yoshi's Island, it's this. And then, finally, the music that plays on the result screen for Yoshi's Island is a completely different piece than usual. It's like a brass band and it gives it a really cool, sort of nice homely feel. These little changes and additions make you really feel like you've been transported to Yoshi's Island and it's a really lovely touch. Look, even the coin sound effect is the same as in Super Mario 2 Yoshi's Island, which is where the track's inspiration is from. Also, just a little shout out to the music for this whole track. It's a beautiful, jazzy rendition of the original Yoshi's Island music. And for the final bit of dynamic music, we're going to Singapore Speedway. The music for this track is made up of a groovy electronic drum kit that underpins punctuated and sharp chordy synthesizers, giving a very modern and sort of futuristic feel to the music, fitting in well with the bright lights, the high-rise buildings and funky trees of Singapore. However, in laps two and three, you actually head through Chinatown. And as soon as you go under this red archway, the synth changes into a more washed out string and woodwind melody, and it's joined by a gu jiang, which is a traditional Chinese instrument. I'm really sorry if I butcher that pronunciation. Please, uh, I'm sorry. And this instrument plays constant semi-quaver phrases that gives the music a sense of flow that is very different to the more punchy synthesized arrangement. This new arrangement sonically places you in the heart of Chinatown. The sound of the music has a very different feeling to the rest of the track. Moonview Highway. In this course, there are actually two completely different arrangements going on at the same time. And the music switches between the two whenever you go through these toll gates, indicating that you are either entering or exiting the city. When the course starts, you are on the highway and the music is a frantic, upbeat techno track. You have this super punchy electronic drum beat underneath sharp electronic arpeggio semiquavers that give a fast paced drive to the music. And to top it all off, you have this unapologetic synth riffing above all this chaos. It's a real jam as you cruise down the highway, the full moon lighting up the sky, it's beauty bouncing off the surface of the lake as you drift round the corner, blast past the waterfall, making your way towards the bright lights of the city. But then as you enter the toll booth into the city, the vibe completely shifts. The 
It's the same musical material, the same tunes and stems, but the instruments have been swapped out completely. It goes from this techno arrangement to this jazzy, funky arrangement. Now you have an acoustic drum kit with a bass guitar and choppy piano chords as the foundation of the music. And those electronic arpeggios, they're swapped out for this sexy saxophone. And the riffing synth turns into a vibraphone. It still keeps that fast paced sense of drive, but it really feels like you've entered this vibrant city. And then as you head through the tunnel and out the toll booth on the other side, the music snaps right back to the techno drive. A very effective use of dynamic music to set the tone of the various sections of the map. Cooper Cape is a personal favorite of mine. I loved it on the Wii, I love it here. It's just amazing. I love this track. <laughs> So this course has a really fun musical track that accompanies it, and it has great dynamic music that is intrinsically linked to the geography of the track itself. There are three arrangements going on here. Now the arrangement that plays at the opening section of the track has this funky bass line and this silly slidey whistle, as well as a normal whistle on the side. You have a choppy guitar playing offbeat chords, as well as a twangy guitar playing more laid back nonchalant chords. And of course the wobbly synth playing the tune. There is also a cheeky vibraphone in the second section. It all comes together to create the feeling of this zany water slide down the mountain, Cooper Troopers flying around, bathing in the sun. It's just super fun. But then we get to the second section. This one coming into play as you enter the water slide itself. This turns the wackiness dial up to 100. First of all, you got this insane banjo just going ham, <laughs> having a great time. The bass and drum kit are on every single offbeat, just adding to the mayhem. Alongside this, you have a fiddle shredding it and the whistles are still there, just having a great time. This creates a cacophony of chaos, a perfect thing to accompany the player as they enter the fast flowing water, as it pushes them along, not letting them stop, plunging them towards the waterfall. And at the bottom of that waterfall is the third section of the map, and the music takes a massive tonal shift. The arrangement here is so much more laid back. You still have the synth playing the tune, but you have washy chords, a more sporadic drum and bass line. It feels floaty as you drift around the half pipe under the water, fish swimming all around you, the scuba diving toads just vibing out in the water. As you make your way to the end of the underwater section, you get fired back out into the air and the original arrangement comes back in. A real crazy track here, each arrangement is so different, but it wonderfully matches the area that they are assigned to. In Madrid Drive, we are in Spain, and the arrangement really places you in that city. The castanets, the classical guitar, the violin serenading you as you speed down the streets. Now, there are two little sections of the course with dynamic music that actually change the arrangement pretty drastically. First of all, you have the museum, full of pictures that are reminiscent of Super Mario 64. The guitar and violin is swapped out for a harpsichord and harp duo. This gives a sort of old timey feel, more classical in nature, which is fitting as we are indeed in a museum. Also the acoustics of the music are vastly different. The reverb has been piled on, making you feel like you are in this echoey building. The arrangement just gives off a level of class and sophistication as you peruse the artwork. <laughs> and it cuts away as soon as you barrel out of the building back onto the streets of Madrid. And now we go into the stadium where we find the last bit of dynamic music in Mario Kart 8. As you enter the stadium, the arrangement turns into a football chant. The drum beat is heavy and driven. There is a bass guitar line, but other than that, pretty much every single instrument has become this low bass and baritone vocal line, reminiscent of a football chant. And it really does sound like a chant. It's like you've entered into a cult. <laughs> but it does give this section that sense of grandiosity. Also, a super fun little addition here. As you drive through the goal, 
The crowd gives off this cheer as if their team has just scored. I think it's really cute. <laughs> Two great little arrangements that just add a little bit of spice to the music as you drift away around Madrid. And that's it. That is all the dynamic music in this game. Unfortunately, the booster packs have nowhere near as much dynamic arrangements as the base game, but that's not surprising as the booster packs didn't have the same amount of budget, manpower, or development time. But still, we got some really killer dynamic music here. What a journey. This game is so special and the love and care that went into every single aspect of it is astonishing. Dynamic music like we've explored in this video is not something that is needed in a game, but it's something that makes a game better. When developers and composers implement things like this into their video games, it shows us how much they care and how much they love the games they're making, and it makes them even more special. So that's all from me. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all on the next video. Bye!